So now that we have the model finished, we just need to send the model to Keyshot using the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. So we need to make sure we first have Keyshot installed, and then we also have the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge installed, and then we just need to activate the bridge. So I'm going to come up here to the actual render tab up here, and then I'm going to locate external renderer, and in here you have a button to activate Keyshot. Now you just simply click this, and now when you press BPR over here, Anything you have visible on the selected tool will now be sent to Keyshot. Now I have Keyshot open already, so I'm going to come over here and just minimize ZBrush quick. And I just have Keyshot loaded up right next to ZBrush here. And this is just a fresh Keyshot scene. So to quickly send this entire model over to Keyshot, so we can generate some renders, we need to make sure we have Keyshot set to the external renderer. And then we're going to come over here and click BPR. And this is going to take anything in your scene here and send it right to Keyshot. So I'm just going to come over here and click. And as you can see now it is transferring this file over to Keyshot. So now we should have that city right there inside of Keyshot. So now we can actually move the city and start framing this to start generating some different views to actually send to Andrew. So to do this we just can hold Alt and then use the actual right mouse button to kind of pan in and then use middle mouse to position our camera where we actually need it. And we're just gonna rotate our city like so. So you can see now we have our city here looking identical to as it was inside of ZBrush here, but now it's actually using the Keyshot renderer and Keyshot materials to actually generate the scene. So I'm just going to quickly come through now and actually start setting some camera angles for this and then applying some different materials to kind of generate some passes for Andrew so he can load them into Photoshop and then use them to generate his conceptual image. So the first thing when using Keyshot to actually position your camera in the scene is you may want to find a place or a focal point on the actual model. So you could do this by just coming to different areas on your model and just kind of moving around until you find that actual focal point or that actual position. But there is an option inside of Keyshot where you can establish a look at point. So with my model on the screen like this, I'm just going to press spacebar. And after you press spacebar, this is going to open up the project panel over here. And then we're going to go to the actual camera area. And in the camera area, underneath the position and orientation drop down, there is an option called Select Look At Point. Now when you click this, it's going to give you an on-screen option here, and you can now come through and simply click on any area on your model, and this is going to establish a look at point. So when this look at point is established, this is now going to become the actual focal area of your actual scene, and so after you click Done, you can come through and now when you rotate, with the Rotate option selected, and holding Alt and then clicking the left mouse button, you'll see it's going to rotate around that actual look at point. So this is handy when moving through large city scenes like this. So you can quickly come through and kind of find a look at point and then just simply click that look at point and then actually go through and rotate around that area to generate the camera angle you're looking for. So I'm just going to come through and pick a part on the model here. Let's just move this around move over here and maybe we'll establish you know a look at point say maybe this little building right here and just click that and just hit done and now I'm just gonna close this actual project panel here by just hitting spacebar and now I'm just going to zoom in on the scene here and try to like frame a certain camera angle so maybe something like this now we can change our perspective for the camera as well. So we just come up here and type in the perspective value we're looking for. So I'm going to go for like 35 and just click that and that's going to update. And then we can kind of just position our scene and move stuff around until we find an angle that we actually like inside a key shot here. Now once you have your angle set, right now we're using the default world environment. So I want to load an environment in that has some harsher lighting to it. So I'm going to come over here to the library panel over here, and I'm going to go to the actual environment tab, and I'm going to type in forest road. Now after you type that in, this forest road HDRI image should now load in, and I can now load this into my scene by simply clicking and dragging, and that's going to set that environment. 
And now with this environment set, I can now hold control and click with my mouse and this will actually rotate the environment in the scene here. And as you can see as I rotate, the actual shadows are changing based on the actual HDRI environment. So this will allow you to come through and rotate this and get kind of different shadows or different effects that you may like on your actual buildings. Now after we have this camera set to a view that we like, we can store this camera. So we're gonna hit spacebar again. And this is going to open up that project panel. And now we're gonna navigate over to the actual camera tab. And in here, we're gonna choose this drop down icon right here, and we're just gonna click add camera. Now when this is actually added, we can now lock this camera. So we can store this for later use. So now we can go back to say free camera, get a different angle of our city here, maybe something like that, then add a new camera there, and then lock that one. And now we can switch back and forth between those actual camera angles. So this is really handy when coming through and storing a bunch of camera angles and then going back and deciding which one you actually like and then generating renders from that angle. Now after we have our camera angles kind of established, we can now start applying some different materials to these buildings to kind of generate different passes. So I'm going to hit spacebar again to close the actual project panel over here. And now with that closed, we're now going to come over to the actual library panel over here and then choose the material tab. And in here you have a whole list of key shot materials you can actually apply to your model. Right now the model is using the matte cap gray material that we sent directly from ZBrush over here. So if I want to apply a different material, you just need to come over here and then go to one of these actual different categories. So I'm at plastic right now. And then you just come through and pick a material. So I'm going to pick this hard, rough material here. And then just simply click and drag it on your model. So now after you drag this on, you're going to see Keyshot is now going to render your model with that actual material applied. So we're going to use these materials here to generate different passes on our cityscape here. And then we're going to store these passes out as different images. And then I'm going to hand those off to Andrew. And you can use those passes to kind of blend together or mask out different areas to generate different effects. So we're going to come through now and just select a few different passes. So let's say we're going to get this hard rough gray. That's a pretty good one. And then say, let's experiment with some of the stuff in the tune area down here. So they have these kind of outline kind of uh, materials as well. So we'll just apply that quick to my model by just clicking and dragging. You'll see now I have this nice kind of tune outline. So that might be handy for Andrew to use in his uh, conceptual image. So I'm just going to go through and just experiment with some other different materials in here. to so just kind of render some different effects. So we had that one hard, shiny uh, plastic and maybe a rubber, and then we have that tune one. So just going through and just playing with them in different materials and seeing how they handle to the environment lighting we have set across you know, different surfaces before we actually start rendering these out. Now after we have a few of these kind of picked in our mind here, we can now start generating a render queue, which is going to allow us to apply these different materials and then render them out individually to a set image size, and then we can actually hand those off to uh, be used inside of Photoshop to kind of establish our conceptual image. To do this, the process is actually pretty simple. We're going to come to the top and click on Render, and then we're just going to open up the actual Render panel. Now when the Render panel opens up, you'll see you have a bunch of options over here. You actually click through and change different settings. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is just the output area. And in here, you have the ability to change the name of the image, set the format, it changes to PSD, and then change the resolution. Right now, the resolution of my scene is set to 1080 by 720, so we're going to increase this a little bit. Say, so change the 720 to say 2880. And then clicking back over here, should now update the other side. We can set the DPI. So you can pretty much control the output right here. Now the next thing I want to do is come over to quality. Now in quality you have a few different ways in which you can actually control how the image will be rendered and when it will actually stop. I usually end up using the maximum time option up here and this is going to take your real time kind of settings you have set right here and then run it in real time for as long as you set it. So I'm going to come through here and say set this to say 15 minutes. So that should be pretty good for this uh, rubber material that I have on the model there. And then I'm going to go over to the Q option through here. And in here, I'm just going to come over here and click Add Job. 
Now when you click this add job, it's going to look at what you have in your scene currently inside of Keyshot and then add it to the render queue. So it's going to take your quality settings and your output settings and then all the materials and environments and whatever you have applied on your model and then add that to the queue. So I'm coming here and just click add job. Now after this is added, you can hover over it and you can kind of see what it's actually going to render out. So there's a little preview here of the actual image that's going to be rendered. Then we can go back into Keyshot here and say now apply another material. So say like this tune outline here and just apply that over like so. And then go back to the render tab at the top and click on render again. And now we can change the different settings in here. So the quality of this line shader probably doesn't really need to go for 15 minutes. So we'll change this to like 10. And then we'll go to the output. Still everything set the way it was originally. It's just appended a new number now. So the other image will be 447 and this one will be 448. And then we can go back to the queue and now we can add this as another render. So we can cover over that. So then we have our line, we have our rubber. And now we can go back into Keyshot here. Say so go to that plastic area. Find that hard plastic right here. Actually, it's upward. So it's hard rough plastic. And then apply that to the model as well. And then go back to the render panel. Set the quality on this one. We'll up this a little bit. Say so do maybe 30 minutes. And then go back to the queue and click Add Job. Now after you have all these kind of set, you know, all your different passes set up to render. All you need to do is come down here and click on Process Queue. Now when you click Process Queue, it's going to go through and process all these in order. It's going to pause what's rendering inside a Keyshot here and then render these out in its own window. So I'm going to just do that quick so you can kind of see how it actually works. So I'm just going to click Process Queue. So when you click it, you're going to get this process to come up and then you're going to get a second window that will actually start rendering your scene here. So here we have it actually rendering out. You can see we got the queue going. Down here it'll tell you what percentage of the render is completed, how many cores it is using on your machine, and how long it's taking. So we'll go through and just do this to every single one of these queues here. I usually end up setting up the queue and then rendering these out overnight. And then when I come back in the morning, they're all generated. And then I can start using these uh, to kind of process the different passes inside of Photoshop. So I'm just going to stop this render queue here. I'll just cancel this and close that out. And I'll show you some examples of the passes I've generated for Andrew. So here we have some examples of some of the passes that I saved out using that process. So I have one that's kind of harsh lighting, so using kind of the shadows on a flat material. I have one of more of the shinier materials being applied to kind of give some reflection values. A like flat brownish clay one. Uh, the black rubber, a metallic metal one, and then some line art ones. So you can see you can use a wide range of the materials inside a key shot here. And since your environment is staying the same or consistent through all these renders, every single one of these lighting effects are going to be consistent through all of them. So this is going to allow you to come through and use just masking and other items inside of Photoshop to kind of blend these together and generate different effects. So I'm going to send all these passes to Andrew to aid him in his creation of the final conceptual image.